strength at sea is supply at sea, for supply is the lifeblood of sea power. Continuing sea power needs continuing supply power, bringing all the fighting needs to the fleet in any part of the world. Without supply power, all the personnel, all the facilities, all the modern equipment would be of little combat value for long. To keep this great strength supplied at sea as a constant shield of protection for our country, on guard months at a time, that is the responsibility of Navy Supply. A tremendous task, apt and complex. Behind this seemingly simple operation, this rendezvous at sea, is a billion dollar business involving research and development, design, cataloging, construction and maintenance, inventory control, purchasing, storage, transportation, accounting, coordination, teamwork of men of the Navy and civilians ashore. In running that billion dollar business, the Navy relies on the officers of the Navy Supply Corps. Here are modern military supply and business specialists, highly qualified because of experience and professional training. Afloat, the Navy Supply Corps officer is responsible for providing the needs of his unit, the spare parts and general supplies required to keep in operation the ship's engines, radios, radar, gun mounts. He manages the preparation and service of food for the ship's crew. He disperses their wages, supplies their clothing, manages the ship's store and service activities, and he helps fight the ship when general quarters is sounded. Ashore, he may be attending a postgraduate course in business administration at one of our nation's leading colleges, or operating in the inventory control phase of the Navy supply system, or in the various echelons of the supply distribution network, serving in the bureaus and offices of the Navy Department, the Defense Department, or on major staffs. Back of the Navy Supply Corps officer and his men is the Navy Supply System. Let's see how it operates. For example, let's take that cargo net filled with supplies, medicines, electronics and aviation repair parts, foodstuffs, ordnance and submarine equipment, articles for resale in the ship's store, products from all sections of the United States products from California and New York, from Texas, Illinois, West Virginia, from Montana and Ohio. How did these items get here from thousands of miles away? What made them available to the fleet exactly when and where they were needed? The story has its beginning here, with planning data in composition and deployment of the fleet and fleet operations. While it is axiomatic in the military that the commander determines the requirements for the fleet operation, this largely refers to the broad program in terms of men, ships, planes, and guns. And it does not carry down to the multitudinous individual items required to support that broad program. That is the job of Navy supply. Under the guidance of the civilian executive assistants of the Secretary of the Navy, seven technical bureaus are responsible for providing the major equipment needs of the Navy. The Bureau of Supplies and Accounts, of Ships, Aeronautics, Naval Personnel, Ordnance, Yards and Docks, Medicine and Surgery, Each bureau designs, procures, controls its segment of the equipments known as the major end items. 
to support, operate, and maintain the major end items of equipment, and to support the men and women of the Navy, as well as the shore facilities, the Navy requires over 1,200,000 repair parts and consumables, ranging from video scanning tubes to paper clips. These are called secondary supply items. To provide coordinated, effective, and economical supply support for the Navy, the responsibility for the management of the secondary items is lodged in one bureau, the Supply and Business Bureau of the Navy, the Bureau of Supplies and Accounts. The intelligence or nerve centers of the Navy supply system are the supply demand control points. Each is an inventory manager for a specific segment of the secondary supply items and functions under the guidance of the Bureau of Supplies and Accounts in Supply Matters and the Technical Bureau responsible for the related major end item in Technical Matters. There are 13 supply demand control points in the Navy supply system, each controlling the material in its assigned area, assuring proper balance between supply of and demand for individual items of supply. Collectively, the 13 supply demand control points cover the entire gamut of material required by the Navy. The primary job of each supply demand control point is determining which items to buy, how much of each item to buy, when to buy, and distribution to meet the demand. To carry out this tremendous task, the supply demand control point must have information and it comes from various sources, from the fleet commanders relative to the composition and deployment of the operating forces to be supported. Information from the Technical Bureau involved, from the Bureau of Supplies and Accounts. Information from stocking points as to quantities on hand, quantities on order, issues during a reporting period, and known future requirements. The evaluation of these data forms the basis for the decision of each inventory manager. Orders for necessary supplies are then sent to civilian suppliers, and at the direction of the supply demand control point, the items are shipped directly to a strategically located supply depot or center. Let's take a look at the work of these supply depots and centers. What do these giants of the distribution network do? They store the material until it is needed. They keep the stock records of what is in store. They pack and crate it for shipment. They ship material when it is requisitioned. All in all, they provide supply support, both wholesale and retail, directly to the operating forces and to other activities of the shore establishments. The system provides emergency service too. When thousands of miles away, a vital piece of equipment unexpectedly fails and a replacement is not available within the task force itself, the supply depot or center in the United States is notified by message. If the necessary part is not in stock, the appropriate supply demand control point in the United States could be notified by the transceiver system. This supply demand control point knows which depots have that vital part in stock. Shortly after the vital part has been ordered shipped from the most conveniently located depot, it is on its way with other material to the nearest Navy overseas air cargo terminal. It is flown to the air station closest to the ship's operating area. Here, the part is transferred to a plane capable of landing aboard an aircraft carrier. This is a COD, or COD, aircraft. This time, those familiar initials, COD, mean carrier on board delivery. Once aboard, it is transferred.
transferred to a helicopter for delivery to the ship requesting the needed equipment. Aside from the emergency service, it is necessary to maintain floating warehouses to meet the everyday requirements of the fleet in widely separated areas. These floating warehouses must be capable of meeting up with fast task forces to enable these combat ships to remain at sea in any ocean indefinitely. The distribution systems to the fleet are under the control of the service force commanders, the principal logistic agents for the respective fleet commanders. From the Tidewater Supply Depots, the pipeline or shuttle ships deliver all of the needs of the fleet to the underway replenishment group. These groups are made up of auxiliaries designed for and trained in actual transfer at sea procedures. Floating warehouses, utilizing materials handling methods specially adapted to the peculiar conditions prevailing at sea. Floating management. Here, as in the supply demand control points, the Navy supply system has taken on the modern look of big business, using the most up-to-date techniques, electronic machines, special training of personnel. With the aid of roller conveyors, stores that formerly had to be manhandled from the deep reaches of the hold flow quickly and easily to the specially designed pocket lift conveyor whose pockets smoothly and speedily carry the packages to the main deck. On deck, the stores are sped by roller conveyor to the spot most convenient to the actual transfer at sea. Supply, lifeblood of sea power. It is from this all-important underway replenishment group that the fighting ships receive all fuel for themselves and aircraft, all their fresh and staple foods, ammunition, and all other general and technical items required to keep the fleet in operation afloat. Aboard fighting ships, many supplies must still be placed by hand in storerooms. This completes one phase of the mission of Navy supply. The cycle continues, supporting a vast, versatile armory of weapons, the basic rifle used to carry out amphibious assault, rockets to support the assault force, heavy conventional weapons, guided missiles of tremendous destructive force, atomic-powered submarines, mines to curtail movements of the enemy. Long-range patrol planes for reconnaissance, or the latest in carrier-based aircraft with air-to-air -air guided missiles to blast the enemy from the sky. With the help of the officers of the Navy Supply Corps, the men of the Navy and the civilian employees ashore, behind the scenes, on the scenes, making certain supplies are delivered exactly when and where they are needed, our Navy is ready at any time, anywhere, for any action in support of United States policy, whether it be by an all-out nuclear strike, tactical support missions at sea or on land, showing the flag in friendly ports to remind the world of our mobile fighting forces, or keeping the sea lanes open for the lifelines of freedom throughout the world, strength at sea is supply at sea.